Dear Nigerians, ladies and gentlemen of the press, today we celebrate the fifth International Day of Education with the team investing in people prioritizing education. It's no doubt that education saves lives. As the United Nations Messenger for Peace, Malala Yousafzai would rightly say, one child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world for the better. Also, Nelson Mandela once referred to education as the most powerful weapon with which we can change the world. As an advocate for equitable, safe, and quality education, I see education as an engine for poverty eradication and a vehicle for peace building. Today, education is at the heart of the Sustainable Development Goals because without a realization of, the quali of quality education, it is impossible to achieve the rest of the goals. Once again, you can all agree with me that the need for quality of education cannot be overemphasized. We need education to reduce inequalities and improve health. We need education to achieve gender equality and eliminate child marriage. We need education to protect our planet's resources. And we need education to fight intolerance as well as to nurture progressive global partnerships. Today, we have a world that evolved by conflict, banditry, and terrorism. And if we do a Y analysis, we will be so shocked to discover that the gap in quality education happens to be the bedrock. Globally, at least 262 million children, adolescents, and youth are out of school. In Nigeria, the latest projection is that about 20 million children are out of school. Most of them are girls. Why millions more who attend school are not mastering the basic foundational skills? This is a violation of their human right to education. The world cannot afford a generation of children and young people who lack the skills they need to compete in the 21st century economy, nor can we afford to leave behind half of humanity. We must do more to advance the sustainable development goal for, which is quality education, and ensure inclusive, equitable, and safe access to quality education as well as promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Education can also break and reverse cycles of intergenerational poverty. Studies show that if all girls and boys complete secondary education, about 420 million people could be lifted out of poverty. It's time to prioritize quality education for public good. Support it with cooperation, partnerships, and continuous funding and recognize that leaving no one behind starts with education. Gentlemen and ladies of the press, permit me to take us through Nigeria's five years budgetary allocation to education and compare to that of defense. Allocation to the sector in the 2023 budget estimate still fell short of the UNESCO's recommendation as 1.79 trillion or 8.2% was allocated to education out of the 21.83 trillion budget. While the defense and security sectors have been allocated 2.98 trillion or 13.4% of the 2023 budget. Although the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, recommended that developing nations should give up to 26% of their annual budget to public education. Nigeria's allocation to the sector is still less than 10% since 2016. Consequently, of the 55.3 trillion budgeted 
by the federal government of Nigeria in the last six to seven years, only 3.5 trillion was allocated to education, and this represents less than 10%. Ghana and South Africa, for example, have not actually met the UNESCO recommendations of 26%, but they have done far more than the giant of Africa, Nigeria, allocating a maximum of 23 and 16.7 percent respectively. In 2016, of the 6.06 trillion total budget, only 369.6 billion or 6.7 percent was allocated to public education in the country. In 2017, 550 billion or 7.38% was allocated to education out of out of 7.929 trillion budget while in 2018 605.8 billion or 7.04% was given to education out of 9.2 trillion budget in 2019 620 billion or 7.505% was allocated to education out of 8.92 trillion. While in 2020, 671.07 billion or 6.7% was given to education out of 10.33 trillion. Allocation to the sector in the 2022 budget of 16.239 trillion, only 1.29 trillion or 7.9% was allocated to public education. On the other hand, according to reports by the World Bank, Ghana allocated 23.81% of its national budget to education in 2015, 22.09% in 2016, 20.1% in 2017, and 18.6% and 22.6% in 2020. In 2018, South Africa has continuously increased its allocation to the sector from 246 billion rand or 16.7% in 2018. 310 billion rand in 2019, 387 billion rand in 2020, and projected that it will hit 416 billion rand by 2023 and 2024. Though South Africa's allocation in the period varied from 14.4% to 16.7% of the total budget in the years under review, the performance was much better than Nigeria. Recall that UNESCO had recommended that developing countries should allocate between 20 to 25% of their national budget to the sector. The recommendation on the need for developing nations to use education to bridge the gap between them and developed nations. Right now, Nigeria has the highest number of out-of-school children in the world as of October 2022, about 20 million children are out of school in Nigeria. According to the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, this figure is progressively on the increase. We must rise and get it right now. If not, such children would fight back when they grow up. Banditry, kidnapping, drug abuse and other social vices are on the increase because of lack of access to quality education. Poorly trained and poorly educated people are increasing in number daily and they are not prepared for the best ways to face the challenges of life. If our educational system is not adequately funded to train citizens, then how do we make judicious use of the human resources we always project as an advantage? We pride to be the most populous black nation, but the reality today is that we are the most populous black nation with poorly educated people. 
it might suffice to say that we are sitting on a time bomb. And this is the reason why banditry and insurgency has been on the rise in Nigeria. How and why do we neglect, do we budget for defense more than we budget for education? I have never seen anywhere in the world where defense or firepower ended terrorism. Nowhere in the world, not in Afghanistan, not in Iraq, not in South Sudan, not in Libya, and even in our dear country, Nigeria. For the past 14 years, firepower or the increase, increasing defense budget has neither ended the Northeast insurgency nor the increasing banditry in the North, in the North Central and the Northwest. In the words of Nelson Mandela, with guns, you can kill a terrorist, but with quality education, you can kill terrorism. When we cannot produce those who would give the nation the desired future and leadership, what then becomes of the future of our country? The sector must be well-funded and stakeholders motivated too. Our schools, particularly public schools, for instance, are overcrowded and there is lack of basic infrastructural facilities, lack of quality teachers, and poor remuneration. It is the poor funding that has led to alarming poor learning outcomes. Not all children who attend school learn, and every and very sadly, schools are now no longer safe, especially in the northern part of Nigeria and the southeastern part of Nigeria. The fact is that what you put in is what comes back as an output. This explains the concept of education as an investment and a consumption. We are not doing enough regarding budgetary allocations to the education sector. Education needs more funding than it is getting now. And it is pitiable if smarter, smaller nations like Ghana is devoting more to, educate, to the education sector than Nigeria. We are all seeing the results in Ghana. Let us say we cannot meet the 26% of budget reallocation to the sector as suggested by UNESCO. Are we also saying that 7 or 8% is what we can do? There is nothing stopping us from getting to at least 20% allocation level. Apart from the allocation of the Ministry of Education by the federal government, there are other means through which we can fund education. We have the Universal Basic Education Commission. We have the Tertiary Education Trust Fund. We have the interventions by agencies such as Northeast Development Commission, the Niger Delta Commission, amongst others. We are not saying we have got to the level we want to get to. But the government may be trying its best in these circumstances, given the budget reality and the economic reality. But we also know that the funding of education cannot be left to the government alone. Other stakeholders, such as the international development agencies, philanthropists, religious institutions, companies, etc., should also make their own contributions towards achieving equitable, safe, and quality education for all by 2030 in Nigeria. Education is a very important part of life, whether acquired in a formal or informal way of learning. Therefore, we must invest in people. We must be intentional as a government and as stakeholders and as individuals to prioritize education, to make people functional and useful citizens for us all. We use this occasion to reiterate our call on government at both national and subnational level to place a high priority and a high premium on education. We must embrace, we must brace up as a nation to invest adequately in people and prioritize education by raising 
the budget reallocations to education in line with the internationally recommended benchmarks of at least 4% to 6% of our gross of our GDP and of 15% to 20% of public work expenditure. A better humanity is possible. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria and God bless all Nigerians at home and in diaspora as we commemorate the 2023 International Day for Education. We must be intentional about prioritizing education in all our investment efforts for the people. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all.